Hi, everybody. My name is Bruno Polubert from Universal Montreal. Uh, I'm an education professor, and I, also, I am also the director of the Teaching and Learning Center there. So uh, actually, there's been lots of talks about digital transformation in the last years. And uh, just uh, actually yesterday uh, has been launched an internship in Canada on digital transformation. Uh, lots have been going on since the pandemics and everything. Uh, we presented two years ago at the first Moodle Mood Global in Barcelona, uh, the roadmap of the SINA project. The SINA project, SINA, INA is, uh, E-N-A is LMS in French, so it's a center of excellence uh, uh, for LMS based on Moodle. This project is uh, financed by the Quebec Ministry of Education, and we are far we are five institutions partnering in it. Uh, my uh, friend Mario from IT uh, is co-leading a project with me at Université de Montréal. And we have also Sandra Gabriel and Vuk uh, that are in, sitting in the room from Concordia. But we have also three other partners. So uh, actually, it's, uh, there are many aspects of this project. There is an operational aspect in which we are planning to move to the cloud very very soon, and there's another aspect which is a little bit more strategic. We have received funds to, uh, I'd say, push the limits of Moodle. Maybe it's a bit uh, bold, but uh, we wanted to do innovative developments in the Moodle, on the Moodle scene. So that's what we presented two years ago. And uh, actually what happened since uh, two years, actually, uh, right after the move made 2022, someone, what happened? And no, not in May, in November. What happened in November? ChatGPT. And then after ChatGPT, many, many others appeared. So now there's a lot of them. So uh, actually, we were, then when we presented, we had uh, three technological categories. And Mario and I, in the last weeks, uh, we kind of changed the focus. Well, we, we were asking, well, actually, what are the pedagogical needs uh, this project would try to answer? And then we changed the way of talking about these, and we switched from technological categories to uh, categories based on pedagogical needs. Uh, so I'll uh, make them about you, and I will uh, upload the presentation afterwards. It's not secret, but it's very warm. It's just been, it just finished to cook. Uh, so, uh, first category is feedback-based learning. Uh, what, uh, why feedback-based learning? Actually, uh, you, uh, we, uh, what are we talking about? We are talking about diversification, enrichment, and ease of use in giving and receiving feedback in diverse assessment situation uh, in order to support learning. A very important uh, research result uh, the, in the Australian Hattie, uh, he's been doing uh, an analysis of the meta-analysis uh, on education since 2009, and feedback is one of the most efficient, it's about the most efficient pedagogical action you can have that will have an effect on the learning outcome. So it's very, very efficient. So what are the teacher's needs regarding feedback? Well, teachers need to grade and give feedback more easily in a way that they will be more easily understood. They need to offer feedback while actually they're very busy. In large class, they have to find a way to give more effective feedback in, uh, in a more effective fashion. And we also, they might, not want, they might not know that they want it, but we in the Teaching and Learning Center would like very much them to move from quizzes and tests to authentic assessments, like by small tests. Uh, they don't know that they need it, but we know they need it. Uh, we actually want them to respect the rules of effective feedback while giving feedbacks. We want them to assess for learning, not only assess for grading, and we want them to provide feedback in a variety of forms, audio, video, annotations, and maybe peer evaluation, peer assessment, like in the form of a workshop, it might be a way of giving more feedback to students while easing the job on teachers. So uh, students' needs, it's quite simple. They need to receive timely, precise, and understandable feedback that will f let them uh, with their sense of self-efficacy and let them in control. 
They, they are the basic rules of giving feedbacks. So we have a few projects, like the specific projects. I, I'll say at the macro level, like each of these projects could be uh, described in some details, but we'll, we'll stay uh, there. Anyone here in medical education? No? OK. Yes? Have you ever heard of Test par Concordance? The script? No, script concordance. I like concordance. Uh, actually, it's been developed in Montreal by uh, um, a doctor and a doctor and an educator called Bernard Charlin. Their uh, concordance training, their kind of base of you present a clinical situation and then you add an information to the clinical situation and then you ask the students uh, how this change is hypothesis. Uh, and actually, the student gives his answer, and then he compares his answer to the answers of a panel of experts. So you have four or five experts in the field, and they don't always totally agree. And the interesting thing is that the students, they can compare their own answers and justification to the ones of the expert. And there's one answer that is usually more right than the others, in the sense that it's more consensual, but you have also divergent answers that could be uh, plausible. So the student, it's a, very, it's a, a way of giving him uh, or her qualitative feedback. Uh, actually, we've been uh, talking about workshop. Uh, I the, Actually, the most effective workshop, and it was an interesting presentation this morning on the workshop, and uh, 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 I'd say the the, the critical piece in the workshop activity uh, is actually to have the, the graders uh, evaluated. The quality of the assessment by the assessors has to be assessed. And this is one presentation actually we had in uh, uh, late, uh, late morning this, uh, this morning. At Purdue University, they uh, developed a system in which they use AI to uh, actually, it was not generative AI. This was a few years ago, but they use AI to calculate the distance between the grade an assessor would give their teammates, and if the grades were too high or too low, the assessor would be penalized, and if would if it would be close, uh, it would be uh, interesting. So there are ways. The workshop, I love the workshop activity, but it's complicated to run and it's complicated to time. So some AI assistance in the workshop activity uh, could help a lot. Uh, portfolio integration with competency-based component, and now I'm looking at Christina. We heard a little bit, actually we heard about that yesterday. Uh, I think uh, we Mahara is very interesting, and the competency-based component in Moodle is very interesting. So the question is a little bit, how can we integrate both effectively? And then uh, maybe uh, advanced learning feedback functionalities, portfolio integration. Sorry about that. I, the, this was repeated, so a repetition. So the second category of needs is AI-assisted feedback and guidance. Actually. It's basically the same needs. So we have the same needs as the one I presented earlier, but we add one to we add one small thing to this. The small thing we add is that uh, what we learned from adoption model, the first adoption model, the time by Davis 1989, the drivers of adoption are two things perceived usefulness and ease perceived ease of use. And all the following models, the TAM2, the TAM3, the UTOT, are basically relying on the, these two main components. So ease of use, ease of use is determined by usability, but it's uh, determined by also support and training. So uh, actually, the real need for students is receiving technical support while using Moodle. In our university, we are not allowed to support students. Like we ask resource, am I recorded? <laughs> no, I hope not. So uh, actually, uh, we uh, are supposed to give support to teachers, and we are not support, supposed to give support to, uh, to students. In my teaching and learning center, I have uh, two-person per, two staff giving the support to the 65,000 students at University of Montreal. So that's not a lot, and we still do it, even if we're not supposed to. So uh, they need to receive uh, 
instant answers to their questions about course content. They need to be guided towards the right answer rather than having the direct answer. Like good teacher, they won't you they won't answer you the answer. You ask me, uh, I'm a psychology teacher. If you ask me, actually I was. So if you ask me a question of, about psychology, I might not give you the answer straightforwardly, but I will discuss with you and try to guide you toward the answer. That's called scaffolding. So uh, that's a much more effective process cognitively than just giving the answer because it makes, it makes the student reflect. You are bringing him or her somewhere. So uh, st students may also ideally be offered personalized learning and assessment activities that are tailored to their precise level. So uh, what would be the teacher's need? Uh, on one part, they would be need to be relieved of the burden of technical support for Moodle, and uh, that uh, would permit the institution to maybe offer support for the richer uh, Moodle functions like uh, evaluation, workshop, notebook, etc. So um, I almost did it. The first development plan in that uh, part is uh, technical assistant on Moodle, integration of generative AI in blocks. So that, that, that's checked right? in the presentation of Mag, it's, it's already done. So yeah, we don't have to do it anymore. So AI-based intelligent tutoring. So what we are talking about is simple answer to students question and uh, AI assisted feedback and guidance feature advanced AI-based adaptive learning, and, and that's the one that integrates scaffolding, as I told you. So, uh, learning assessments adapted to diverse teaching contexts. We have more and more diverse situations. We have uh, students with disabilities, we have more diverse students, like of uh, diverse cultural origins. We have now online exams, uh, so we have a wider variety of contexts for assessments. Students' needs is that they are able to take their exams seamlessly, easily, follow the instructions, and not lose their work uh, while they are losing a connection. They need also teachers in a lot of courses still use uh, paper, uh, pen and paper copies for assignments, so this is a need that needs to be addressed. It, everything is not uh, digital. Teachers need, well, they need to control which resources students can access during exams. They need to seamlessly and easily access digital copy of uh, pen and paper work. And they also very much need to have a more efficient workflow, uh, especially for text-based assessment and for large groups. Maybe AI could be uh, of use. So uh, actually, uh, uh, Concordia with Catalyst developed a few years ago uh, something called the COAL system. At University of Montreal, we are working on a program to, to, to uh, get a better usability and better functionality around safe exam brothers and browsers and other things. So we, in the CINA project, we are kind of merging the two. And the second development is integration of proctoring. So that's uh, what is done by the call exam system and some of the enhancement we are planning. Uh, fourth category is AI enhanced dashboard. I'm, I'm good in time. So uh, what are we talking about? Well, the basic needs is students' engagement, persistence, learning, success, and we are adding to that well-being. Uh, students need uh, to use a system. Actually, it's interesting. We ran interviews. So I, what students A, they A to have to log into the SAS to find where their course will take place, who is this, their instructor, what particular room, and uh, be able to go there uh, to see any change. What they really want to have is have everything in Moodle, their course schedule, the changes to their course, and the other thing they want, because uh, all projects, uh, almost all projects uh, on learning analytics, they're designed top-down by educational developers, programmers, some teachers sometimes, and they're based on the course level. Students, what they really want from the interviews we ran is they want to have an overview of their semester, and they want to know 
know how things are going for them in their semester. And what are they telling us? They want to they want us through the, the dashboard to help them regulate. That's fantastic. That's really interesting. So, but uh, actually, I, I didn't see a learning analytics pro project that does that. Uh, what are the teacher's needs? Well, teacher needs uh, two types of needs, like being able to monitor in real time students that might be in difficulty. And teachers in large groups told us that if they had a predictive system that could help Teachers having a very large groups, like two or 300 students, they, they told us, no way I will do individual support. But if I'm able to have a predictive system that categorizes my students in three or four categories, I'm able to send a message to the most in danger with mediative resources. I'm also able to send a, a little felicitation, a, a gratification message those who are very good so they could tailor three or four messages with different resource for their group but not 250. Uh, the other thing that is from our point of view the teaching and learning center need or an opportunity is uh, actually the improvement of uh, and the improvement of the course design through a delayed use of uh, the dashboard. So AI and that's dashboard, we are talking about students dashboard uh, to sustain their self-regulations. Uh, this would require uh, the integration of grades from the SIS into Moodle. Uh, this might also ideally require some work on the gradebook to make it, the notebook, the gradebook to make it uh, a little bit uh, easier to use. And uh, at some point it's more a cultural uh, problem than a technical problem, like you have to get teachers to actually uh, give assignments and uh, give the opportunity uh, to students to get grades early in the course. So uh, we need to have integration of course exam and schedule, and uh, actually uh, we uh, uh, we have a project sub project which is integration of the teachers dashboard based on the project called ACE. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. We are partnering with University of Canterbury, which uh, developed a program called ACE for active course analytics for course engagement uh, with the collaboration of Catalyst. So ACE, uh, there are three parts. Uh, the ACE students part is relying on the engagement indicati indica indicator uh, relying on the CO community of inquiry framework. And uh, actually, uh, you can have automatized email uh, to students. They can see their level of engagement. They can see the upcoming assessment, the time they spent on the course, the top five activities. Uh, the, you can have a comparison for the teacher between uh, users engagement in the course this year and the one last year. Uh, you can filter for some particular groups and this, for example, for the first people uh, in New Zealand, we see in that graph that their level of engagement actually is not lower than the others. It's actually, actually they engage sooner in the course. So teachers, it changed their view. They, they understood that these two type of students uh, actually were engaging, but they needed more support. So uh, the other project is the Syria project. In that project, we actually moved from, we tried to do a bottom-up process. We started by interviewing students and asked them, we didn't show them any uh, learning analytics dashboard. We asked them what they would actually want in such a dashboard. And we had a master's student in engineering that worked on the design of this. This looks like that. Uh, that's now being uh, in test. And uh, we, in that model, we plan to, uh, or we would like to have a block uh, to have AI-generated feedback analyzing the traces in Moodle and uh, giving uh, some coaching to students about their study strategies or the activities they shall do, that type of things. AI-assisted course and program design, development, and improvement. Uh, this is still addressing the needs of student engagement, persistent learning, success, and well-being, and research we call this the teacher's effect. Research is very consistent showing that 
teacher's pedagogical practice has a very strong effect on student engagement and learning. It might be the most important factors. So students' need would be to improve their study strategies, metacognition, and self-efficacy in order to better engage, learn, and succeed. It's quite simple. Teachers need, well, guidance and training in course design and pedagogy. They need to better identify essential contents. Oftentimes, they make, they, they crush too much content in their course. They need to use teaching methods aligned with expected learning outcomes. They need to formulate clear expectations, communicate them, and also start to incorporate active learning and diverse teaching methods in their teaching and avoid too much repetition between courses. So the developments we are planning are uh, communication with students with text message, learning analytics to improve course design, AI recommendations for content development, AI in text block, well, that one is repeated, but it's done also. Integrated syllabus at the program level permitting curriculum mapping. And I saw a presentation on that yesterday. That was really great. Intelligent pedagogical assistant. And now uh, we'll have uh, some interaction but we'll do the traditional i plan for electronic voting but time is running on and i go the hand voting so uh, i'll show you again uh, we'll do a little exercise here uh, we like teachers to be able to formulate pedagogical objectives so learning objectives i let i let you read the four and you choose in your mind what you think is the best for what is among the amongst the four what is the best? So I leave you 15 seconds for that. So we'll, go, we'll do it the good old way with the hand raised instead. Of, I plan for a wook lap, but actually I plan both. So time's up. So who votes? Sorry, I have a little mistake here, but <laughs> I still will. So, who votes for this one? No one, good answer. <laughs> so we are talking about a Mo uh, Moodle course. Who votes for, for this one? Who votes for this one? Who votes for this one? No one. No one. So you don't vote for many. The right answer would be actually the second one. Because why? Because we have an action verb, we have a criteria, we have a context, and it's precise. The last one is not precise. So actually, that is something that we try to teach teachers. So what we developed is a pedagogical assistant, like helping teachers reflect on their course, uh, do their course analysis, uh, and formulate learning objectives, and uh, formulate, uh, think uh, something about, actually help them get their ideas about pedagogical alignment. So uh, the, the first interaction start by a description of the context, and then the AI model uh, actually re says uh, how it did it reflect, uh, gives the answer. Uh, the question I answer it is what are the main challenges I will have in that course? Could give me also solutions. And actually, uh, in second phase, I ask him to formulate learning objectives for me. He gives me a proposition which I can alter. And the interesting thing is that the model also cite its source, the precise paragraphs it's used, and giving hyperlinks to the document that were used in the AI system. So then I move to another part and I ask the system to actually formulate a pedagogical alignment table. And this is once I have my learning objectives and it gives me a very interesting, this is something teachers has a, have a hard time to do. I'm sorry it's in French. I wanted to translate it with Sandra's course, but we didn't find time or connection to do it. And the real interesting thing is that when uh, you have activities that are a high level in the Bloom taxonomy, it will give suggestion at the appropriate level. Like, it does not suggest for creation to have uh, lectures. It suggests to have uh, prototypes like peer learning and that type of things. So it's very interesting. So uh, 
Now it runs on, uh, I give you a little bit of a behind the scenes, uh, it runs on Amazon Bedrock, a Titan running Cloud3. Uh, we are using also Streamlit for quick interface development and the data, uh, Python code and the RAG files reside in Python. And now we are moving all that uh, into AWS. Uh, user testing starts next week and once we have this uh, we'll be able to have an intelligent, intelligent lesson plan assistant, uh, intelligent uh, design assistant for lesson plans, case studies, discussion kinds, formative assessments. Uh, for students, uh, we can adapt this to give them frontline, first line support for Moodle. Uh, we are working on the development of an intelligent tutor for biology courses, and we plan to switch to a Moodle infrastructure, but maybe we'll let the Moodle HU work a little before we do that and incorporate fine tuning with what we do. So, this is the target architecture we are aiming at, but obviously we were not aware of the work uh, being done in the AI subsystem. Uh, so actually, this gives us a unique performing and ethical AI system. Uh, kind of a, like I see a lot of presentation that are focused on performance, but the, the twist here is that we try to be ethical in what we develop. So uh, we have a system that resides locally. Every, uh, every personal data resides in Quebec, doesn't use or collect data for training, let us select any language model, is reliable, does not hallucinate, is transparent, is ethical, and I'm gonna show you a little, that's a hugging face leaderboard for ethics benchmark, and Cloud is the first on all of these benchmarks except two. Uh, it's also economical, and uh, the price of a model is pretty much a good proxy of its carbon footprint because it depends on the lar uh, of the size of the model, and it depends also uh, of the so the price of the tokens depends on the size of the model and the number of tokens you use also uh, enter the cost. So innovative teaching methods. I'm close to run out of time, so uh, teacher pedagogical practices have a decisive impact on student learning. So students need to diversify their learning experience, appropriate new technologies used in the marketplace, improve their digital skills. Teacher needs is to diversify their teaching methods, use teaching methods that encourage effective and cognitive engagement, improve their digital skills, innovate more easily, design motivating and engaging experience. So we are talking about XR and v, uh, VR content integration and AI. We are working with a partner who is called Wanda on a v, AI VR enhanced VR assessment, gamification, serious games development, Jupyter and AWS notebook integration, usability and accessibility. Uh, I go fast for this one. Institutions need to encourage Moodle adoption to a more user-friendly interface to comply also with the just accessibility legislation. Teachers need to same the thing. They need to give more inclusive goals. And uh, we are talking about the uh, EDI application layer, better usability everywhere. And I know that Moodle HQ is doing a lot of work on many of these aspects. We need also maybe an accessibility layer, maybe speech, Synthesis, uh, last uh, but not least, digital course, digital course content management. Uh, the need is uh, actually, especially for activities and resources used in many courses, to have them all in one place so that you don't have to update them in many places. So, uh, so, 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 what would be your, your priorities? And uh, I will go the, to the, actually, the man, hands vote. Who vote for feedback-based learning? That's a few one. Who votes for AI-assisted feedback and guidance feature? A bit more. Who votes for learning assessments adapted to diverse teaching contexts? A few who vote for AI and then dashboard. This one gains more improving course and programs with the help of AI. This one a bit more innovative teaching methods. 
usability and accessibility, digital course content management. So like we have uh, four and five leading the board, so that's the process we're in now. Uh, we are actually not only open to collaborations, but we are actually actively seeking them. So you can contact me or my friend Mario, and you'll be welcome if you are working on some of these things or interested to partner with us to do, we'll be very happy to do so. Thank you, thank you, Bruno. Uh, I think we have, well, we're running out of time, but I think we have time for just one quick question, if you guys have some something uh, there. Yes. Thank you. Um, thoroughly enjoyed the presentation. If I could make a suggestion, uh, there's some great work going on in Open University UK by a guy called Bart Rientes on learning design and using learning analytics. And also in... By, by, by who? Bart Rientes. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, I know him. very bad at Dutch. I uh, can't really say his name. But also in UCL, they're doing stuff around course design um, and uh, AI to, to, to use that. I'd, I'd recommend reaching out to them. I can do introductions. Yeah, and I, I got Mark that we there's a good fit that we talk together. I'd welcome that conversation. Cheers.